All right, awesome stuff. So, let's put the So now we want to quickly just look at the answers and make sense of what is expected of us. Okay. Um, so here you can see we did direct material. All right. They've done it exactly as we did it. All right. There again, you can see they've started the 79,500. 79, uh, 79,500 constitutes the raw material issued to the factory. So again, it's just speaking to your point where we could have just used that as opposed to actually calculating it, all right? Um, so something to take note of, all right? But then we should never be stuck if for any reason they don't give it to us, because at least now we know how to work it out. So then we went to work in progress, all right? And we plugged in the balance, we plugged in those amounts, all right, obviously this came from, and I'll show you now, uh, what we had there in manufacturing overheads. Okay, we'll have a look at that now. We know that we closed it off to finished goods, all right? And these closing balances were given to us, okay? As were the opening balances. Let's quickly have a look at finished goods. Finished goods, again, they also gave us an opening balance and closing balance there, all right? opening and closing balance and then do we have a statement where they say finished goods issued to if you look there the very last line item says cost of sales of finished product okay so that's where they're getting the 321,900 again we can calculate it all right because we know all of these other amounts Okay, we, can you see this 270,000 is coming from your work in progress? Right there. Okay, so you can see that double entry taking place there. Just remember to get that done. Okay, and then obviously you could have calculated that amount as well. All right, but again, if it's there, then there's no point. You might as well just copy and paste, save you a second or two. All right, done with that. We go to indirect materials. Okay. There we also have an opening and closing balance, okay? Um, then we know that if we scroll down, then just double check the amounts. If there's anything else that we needed to post to indirect materials, we see there's that 9,360, okay? So very important, we just need to get our accounts right as to where is this amount supposed to go and, and knowing to which account this is supposed to be closed off to. Because even if they do give us the amounts uh, to which the account is closed off to, if we don't actually make a mental note that it's actually supposed to go there, then we won't know what to actually do with the amount, even though they've given it to us. Okay, where it's supposed to actually go. Okay, so that was indirect materials. Then manufacturing overheads again. Can you see all these costs? They're not directly associated to the product that we are producing. We have indirect labor. We have electricity. Electricity, everybody needs to use the electricity. But can you see this electricity was specific to the factory? All right, if you have another look there, um, under electricity we have factory and we have administrative. We only included the factory in the manufacturing overhead. Okay, so do take note of that. Manufacturing overhead pertains strictly to our production you know, uh, so to speak, except for the direct stuff. Insurance, again, let's have a look there. Insurance, it was factory. It wasn't the administrative side of things, okay? Rent expense, again, it was for the factory. 
Am I lying? Let's double check. Yes, factory, 30,000, okay? Depreciation was for factory equipment. Okay, and then we know this is obviously getting close to work in progress. And this is where we got that, 130,000. You can now see where it's coming from, okay? So it looks simple, but my advice to you is you want to do as many of these type of questions just to get comfortable because the lingo changes here and there. Like you saw, they were using a uh, trade payable instead of creditors control. So small little things that can easily throw us off. Um, in previous exercises that I've done and in the examples at least, as far as I can remember, they didn't give us those amounts. This time they've given it to us. Okay, I saw your hand. No, actually, that would be my problem. Um, uh, because since you say, if you say table, I'm only still free. It will also be okay. Um, yeah, we'll see what's on the memo, but in all honesty, you still will get your marks. And if you see you didn't get your mark, then obviously just notify. That's so that we can rectify that. Okay. Cost of sales, like I told you, again, um, this amount was given. If you look there, I just checked the very last line item. It says cost of sales of finished products. Okay, so there we can then just you know finish goods, plug that in, and then we know this account. This is now proper closing off. There's no. Can you see? There's no balance brought down. This is literal closing off. Goes to the trading account. Trading account, can you see? There's no balance brought down. This is literally getting closed off, okay? Um, yes, so that's getting closed off to the, to the profit and loss account, all right? And this is what I was talking to you guys about earlier, where your sales, the 631, 800, were then deducting the sales returns, the 31, 800, which is then giving us a total sales of 600, okay? Then your cost of sales, we're deducting from the sales to get our gross profit. Okay, you could actually put gross profit in brackets there if you wanted to, but we know it gets closed up to the profit and loss. Okay, finally, we have the profit and loss account. All right, only expenses relating to administrative side of the business are closed off against the profit and loss, okay? And as we were going through these, we know that we noticed that all the administrative expenses were coming here. Okay, so all you need to do is uh, plug that in. All right, there's not going to be any sales here because we already closed off sales to the trading account. Okay, and then you're done. You close it off to the. In other words, what's the balance? The difference between the debit side and the credit side. That's what your capital is going to be. All right, fortunately here we made a net profit. If the, if the debit side was greater than the credit side, all right, remember the credit side here is your income and your debit side, these are your expenses. So if your expenses was more than your income, right, that means that this would be the smaller side. So you would have your capital and in brackets you would have a loss, all right, on this credit side and it would be here. Okay, and so that's how it would then be, okay? And then that obviously that loss would reduce your capital. All right, so that's how we deal with the accounts of a manufacturing enterprise, okay? So we just have one more exercise to do. We won't do it today, uh, but we just have one more exercise to do for learning unit six. And then we have a few exercises in learning unit uh, seven. That's oh, right, five. Five. In learning unit five to, um, to wrap up that chapter. But it's okay. We'll definitely get that done. Um, I'm going to give you guys ice tasks. I'm going to give you guys 
I remember I told you guys to do this for homework. I hope you did. If you did, then that makes your life easier. I'm going to give you ice task uh, question 5.7 and question 5.6. All right, that's based on your, what did you call it again? EOQ, I forgot what it stands for. I don't know why it's leaving my mind where we are evaluating the ordering quantity, all right? The efficient ordering quantity, 5.7 and 5.6. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys that as ice tasks. Okay, all right, so I'll release that to you guys uh, by end of today. I actually do it right now. When do we want the deadline date to be? Next week, Friday? Are we all in agreement? All right, fine. I'll set that up for next week, Friday then. Okay? All right, cool. All right, otherwise, guys, from my side.